Welcome back to Cards and Comics. And today I wanted to put out a video to help other collectors in preventing them from being scammed. We're seeing scamming in the hobby taking off to unprecedented heights uh, with scammers getting a little more bold and things are getting a little bit more dangerous out there in terms of collecting. And this is all due to just, you know, how expensive everything is getting and how little regulation there is and oversight there is in the hobby. So um, this isn't going to be an overly long video, but I want to give you some real good tips and tricks that you can use to protect yourself. And there's a few things I wanted to pass along because I've been collecting since 1986. And there's just things you learn along the way that if you just started in the hobby, maybe you didn't know existed or didn't know to look for. So uh, and some of these might be very common sense to other folks. But here we go. We're going to start and, you know, um, and the first topic is going to be, you know, how to prevent, you know, from being scammed. And I'm going to start with online, right? Because buying cards, there's two main ways to purchase cards. There's meeting people online, either through eBay or other online forums, or in person at card shows, or maybe even, you know, through uh, buy it list on, you know, it used to be Craigslist or wherever you want to do that, yard sales. But online is the major place that people buy and sell cards on a daily basis. Um, one of the things, you know, and I'm going to show you examples of, of this in a minute, but uh, checking eBay sold listings is, is very good. And there's other tools like VCP, Card Ladder, and to see what's been sold before because the one thing you want to do, if it's a serial number card, especially something rare, uh, or a graded card that obviously has a serial number, you can see if this card's been sold before. Does it look the same? Is, is it in the same holder? Did it get regraded, for example? Serial number cards, sometimes you can find out hey, this card was graded by BGS and it was in an eight holder. Now it's in a PSA 10 and maybe it looks a little different. This is what the Boda guys did on Blowout is they did a lot of serial number cards that they could track back to the original holders or even when the card was raw and see that the card was actually altered or trimmed. Um, again, check to see if it looks the same, right? The holder looks the same. Did it get a different grade? It's very important just if you're making high-end sales or, or purchases that you really take the time to do some investigation to see if this card you're going to look you're going to buy is actually legitimate and comes from a legitimate source right if it's not numbered or graded you know one of the big tricks i have that i tell people all the time is you know look to see how often a card is sold for and does it make sense on the rarity of the card and there's lots of examples of this out there um there is the reprinted cards that are sold very often on eBay of high dollar items that are obviously reprints and a lot of times they're sold as reprints, but people don't take the time to check the, the, you know, the auction title with the RP in it or something to that effect. But other than that, there's other auctions where I can point to, and I'll show you some examples where a card is sold over and over and over. Um, and it's a card that actually should be pretty rare and it shouldn't be that available and there's a few cards out there and I'll name them when I get to the that part of the video but um, they're just suspicious that they come up for auction and sell that often um, again do all the photos look the same or from the same seller or area or location what I mean here is if you see five cards for sale of a certain card that's somewhat rare do they all look like they were taken, you know, are they all the same photo for one thing? Or do they look like they were all taken from, let's say, you know, the same um, table? Let's say everything has the same background. Um, and does a seller live in the same area? It could be five different sellers, but they're all located within five miles of each other. And this was a big deal back when the BGS trimming guys were around, the Kevin Burdick guys those guys um, were all from a certain area and if a card was for sale from a certain area um, that was associated with him it was um, considered to be suspicious for one thing and you know you need to understand cards that are highly altered or faked and I'm going to give you a website to go to uh, or, a, or a forum that you can go to uh, for certain cards but there's many out there um, and one thing I want to stress 
very much to anyone in the hobby is this, is that there is very few, in fact, I'm going to say there is nobody who's an expert on every card that's ever been issued. However, there are people out there in forums and hobbyists that have made it their life's work in, in collecting these cards for certain cards, and they are experts in those cards. And they're on the forums, and they, they, they're actually not hard to find sometimes. And you can find someone who actually knows a lot about you know, certain cards. I'll give you an example is, you know, when I purchased or traded for a 79 OPG Gretzky, it was raw and it violated one of my rules about cards like that. But, you know, I was so excited. I really thought the card was, you know, a good deal. And then when I showed it to the PSA hockey forum guys, all of a sudden they all told me this card was fake and they gave me about 10 things to look for on a real card. And my card was obviously fake. And then I was able to go and uh, try to get my money back. And I'll talk about that a little bit in the sports card uh, in the, sorry, the um, card show video because it's relevant there. But it just shows that finding an online expert can really help. And they'll let you know what issues are very highly faked. You know, blowout forums expose the 48 Leafs as being highly altered and trimmed. Tom Brady rookie cards, Willie Mays autos, Ken Griffey autos, Mike Trout cards, Mickey Mantle autos. These cards are highly f altered and faked. And so you need to really do some research before you go into it, knowing what cards are targeted. Because the good thing about the hobby is this, is that there's a lot of cards that exist. And they're made by many different companies. The scammers and fake guys out there usually hone in on a few cards. They don't try to fake every card, they fake a few cards. And if you can understand which of those cards are, are really faked at a high uh, amount, you can kind of avoid that issue or go to higher levels of verification to buy a card that you know is highly faked. And again, you know, doing the homework before buying, I cannot stress enough that if you're gonna buy something you've never purchased before, you're not an expert in, to consult with others, to go out on the websites like PSAs, forums, Net54, Blowout, which are all good uh, resources, and have actual experts and people who are, you know, collecting of that and been collecting that issue and have done the research for you and can give you the knowledge that you may not have to make a good purchase. And we'll go into some examples right now. All right, first up, as an example, is here is Mike Trout rookie card. The Bowman Sterling, right? So, what the first thing I'm going to show is this gold reprint uh, card that you know has been, you know, reprinted tons of times. And again, people still buy it. I've seen it sell a couple hundred dollars before. You know, this card is again highly reprinted, and it, and it says reprint in the uh, auction, but sometimes it doesn't. And this is a card to think about. But if you scroll down here, here is an example of three different sales of a card for November, December, and December again, of a card that sold three different times. It's the exact same photo, and it looks like it's the exact same card. And it's just one of those things where, if this card went for sale again, I would stay away from it, because why did it sell three times You you know, in, in two months? And you could say maybe the person didn't pay for it, but I would say this might be one of those cases of shenanigans where maybe shill bidding occurred. For this card it just looks very suspicious right all right next up willie mays and this is a personal experience i purchased this card this exact card this 2003 tops legends card and you know what actually happened was the um seller was kicked off at ebay and i was refunded the money before i could even file a complaint because i never received it and then i went and looked online and this card is actually not is actually a card that should be sort of rare and you can see that this card has sold many times with the same photo um, or the same kind of auto that a lot of people is, think is fake and in fact a lot of people think this card has been graded many times and is fake and I would look at these two autos right here to make your own inference on what you think a real auto is and what a fake auto is I am not um, 
really sure which one of those is real and which one's fake, but they look really different to me. And you can see, you know, this card has been listed many times and sold many times in the last couple months. And so this is a card I would say to stay away from, and it's been reported on other websites as being a common fake. Next up, Tom Brady. And I'm just going to show you some generic rookies and, and just go through the ones I know have been faked. Bowman rookies have been faked. That's a fact. Um, this Fleer Authentics uh, autograph is commonly faked and reprinted. So a lot of times people uh, have purchased the reprint thinking it's a real auto and it's just a fake reprint. And then the Skybox Impact um, Brady, which was part of the Dallas Card Show fiasco. And you can see this card I've got right here in this grainy photo in a top loader. The card looks a little suspicious here. And then, you know, you just scroll down, you'll see it in different holders. You'll see it you know, many times. And the other card I want to point out is this card right here, this polychrome Tom Brady Ultra card, which is a, not even a real card. Someone just made something up. It's a homemade card. But this card is sold hundreds of times on eBay in a fake slab WCG. And again, this is a common theme. And in fact, if you go to that um, Impact card, you can see how many of these Impact rookies are on eBay right now. Um, but then you can see this one right here that sold for $200 in this kind of crazy um, holder, t the final authority. And again, you know, this is how faking gets done in modern age is if you can't find a you know real company to slab it give it to one of these other you know alphabet uh, companies and they'll slab it for you and it makes it look a little more legitimate right and you know this is an example of how these scams work and why you have to be very cautious when you go into something like you know Tom Brady rookies and the problem with this card that I, I have is it's preying upon the people who just want to have a base level rookie card of Tom Brady so they faked a card that sells in the two to three hundred dollar range because that's where a lot of the the, the beginning collectors or people without all of the funds to buy the expensive Brady cards would go to a card like this thinking that they're getting a real rookie card when in fact they're getting a reprint and the other one is this is a card that I've been looking at because I want to buy it for my Griffey collection but the 99 SP uh, authentic chirography um, auto from Griffey continues to be something that you know is a problem you know this card keeps selling and selling on eBay almost every month and you see this two auctions with the same exact photo pretty much um, from the same seller and you know you see down one down here that's actually graded that looks really different um, it's just you know I'm just a little skeptical about this card and I've quit trying to buy it because it just seems like there's a lot of fakes out there in my opinion and sadly a card that you know I think um, is worthy of looking at in, in high detail and with a with a serious um, lens on on how um, often that card is being sold is the 1994 Mickey Mantle King Griffey Jr. Auto that card used to be a card that was hard to find and now it sells almost a couple of times every month. A lot of raw cards are being sold. A lot of graded cards are being sold. It just seems suspicious to me on that card specifically. Now, the other thing I mentioned was other websites. So here's an example of how to use other websites. So here's vintage card price. And here I'm looking at a 1998 Peyton Manning rookie. I just picked this card you know, just at random. And then right off the bat, I see these you know two cards here from KC Futures sold within a month apart and what I would normally do is I would look at the image and see the serial number 1660 okay well what's the, what's this card and then you know this is 15580 okay so it's not the same card so this guy had multiple of the same card but when you get down right below it here's a card that sold for $1,200 in May it is card 4970 the one right above it is card 4970. 
So within two months, this guy was able to hit a bite now and relist it and make almost $800 profit. And I want to call it kind of shenanigans because, again, it's the highest sell this card has had, you know, since um, almost nine months, you know, and it's the same card that he purchased just previously for 1200 it, it seems a little suspicious to me. And then right below these two cards, um, you have this card, 5940, which sold for $2,000. And then you see it again, 5940. Sell again, different seller, um, just um, a month apart. And what I'm saying here is that this is a fact pattern that you can look at and say, look, are these dealers related? Are these sellers related? You know, if, if this if you're really in the market for this card and this card comes up again, you know, is it the same sellers? And you can might get an inferences that might be shill bidding. There might be some shenanigans going on with it, with this card being sold so quickly between multiple sellers that it may make you not want to bid on it because you may get stock paying more if you truly want to get the card. Um, another website, Collectors Universe, and this is a really interesting thread because this goes back to 1994, or sorry, 2014. So seven years ago, there was threads about counterfeit PSA cards. And, you know, if you, know, if you go through, you know, um, you can just see, you know, um, how often cards are being, you know, counterfeited. And here's one where it talks about an 83 Tops Tony Gwynn, you know, and there's, you know, different thoughts around how they're counterfeiting cards, but it just shows that since, you know, you know, and I just was Googling the first thread that came up, but the, you know, this has been around for going on eight years. So counterfeit cards and PSA slabs is not a new thing. It's been around a long time and you know, counterfeit slabs are something that the hobby has to deal with. Right? So it's good to know if you read through these slabs and these, sorry, these threads, you can, maybe get an idea of what slabs uh, and what cards are uh, more affected. And it just shows you that, you know, 1980s cards were affected. That, you know, I always thought that, you know, they were only going to counterfeit cards like the 56 Mantle and, and, and these big cards. But, you know, when they're, when they're counterfeiting or, you know, pitting fake slabs of, you know, uh, Roger Clemens and Tony Gwynn rookies, you know that it's getting, you know, down to the, um, you know, the t couple hundred dollar cards. And we just saw it with Tom Brady. So it's not just the high end cards that get counterfeited. And then the last website I want to show you is a great um, thread on blowout. So this is about uh, 90s fake cards and mostly focused on basketball. But sets that have known fakes that have been produced, right? And if you go th scroll through here, you know, you'll see 96, 97 platinum. You'll see, you know, give examples of fake and fakes and reels, uh, versions of the card, uh, you know, skybox rubies, you know, it's great because it, he gives you real examples of why the card is real and why the card is fake. Um, you know, fake precious metal gems. Here's one with an SGC authentic, authentic, um, you know, um, slab. And you can see that, you know, a lot of these cards are graded, you know, PSA, BGS, SGC, no one is doing this perfect. Every one of these, um, cards, you know, can be found in multiple, uh, holders from different companies. You know, I mean, like here's a essential credentials and you can see, the difference in serial numbers between the same two cards. It's a great, great thread if you're really into basketball cards and especially 90s cards. Because I guarantee you that the same cards in basketball that were made in baseball and football at some point will be faked as well as soon as they get more valuable. So going back uh, to my uh, to my uh, uh, presentation, I'll go through. Sorry, three, two, one, and now we'll talk about how not to get scammed at card shows. Now we're going to talk about card shows because this is actually 
to me, harder to prevent because of some factors. One, um, you're pressed for time. Most people go to card shows and they go for one day. They're there for a few hours and then they leave. And all their research has to be done either up front or at the show. And if you're not an expert on a card, and especially when you go to a show, you don't know what's going to be there. Uh, you don't really have time to um, do the due diligence that you normally would if you're buying online. So, you know, the first thing is, you know, always bring something with you, a phone, a device to look things up. In fact, I wouldn't even go to the show unless you had some way to do this. And I remember the National in Cleveland when they had terrible internet and nobody could look at prices because the internet was so terrible there and you couldn't get cell reception. Um, it really made the experience terrible because it was very difficult to do any comps or, e or even look up to see last sales to see if the card was, you know, something that had kind of shenanigans again with the card to make sure it's real, right? You can't do any of that research while you're there. That makes it harder to make decisions when you don't have all the data. Um, another thing to think about too, we just talked about counterfeit cards, right? You know, knowing what the slab should look like and, and the flips, there's some great tools out there and, and, and in forums out there that actually go through the history of PSA in every slab and every flip and what to look for in something that may not be real. So you can find some information out there on what the flip should look like from a certain era, right? Um, and you know, a great thing to think about is when you're at a card show and PSA, BGS, or SGC are there, they will look at the slab for you. And I have a story about it is a friend of mine bought a 71 Thurman Munson PSA 8 from a very respected dealer. And when we looked at the card, we said the card looks a little weird and the slab looks a little weird. Can we take it to PSA to see what they think about it? And the dealer was like, sure, you know, I want to know too. And so they took it over there and sure enough, PSA said that Thurman Munson PSA 8 uh, was a fake card and a fake slab. And so my friend got his money back and they were able to, you know, track down, you know, sort of the last person who had it before the dealer bought it. And actually um, PSA um, took the card out of circulation, right? So if they're there, they're going to help you. And if a dealer doesn't want you to go ask him questions or is willing to walk the card over with you to see if it's real or not, I sh certainly would not think about A, buying from that dealer and B, that card itself I would consider to be now questionable. The other thing is, you know, as long as you're in the hobby and as long as people, you know, um, make, I call friends or, or get acquaintances in the hobby, you kind of have people who know things more than you do, right? It's not a shame to, to admit that. And if you have friends in the hobby or dealers, you know, don't be afraid to ask them. Don't be afraid to call them, you know, take it to, you know, I've taken cards to so many other dealers tables and said, Hey man, I know you're an expert or you know a lot about this set. Can you let me know if you think this card is okay? Or is there something I'm missing? You know, with raw cards, grady cards, either way, dealers are there. They want to be helpful, right? They want to help you make good decisions. If they help you, you might buy from them more often. Don't be afraid to ask someone for help if you don't know the answer, right? And if someone's not willing to help you or give you advice, um, you know, I would say, you know, maybe they're not someone you should be doing business with because even if they're not making the sale, helping you should help them in the future, right? Um, Another big tip is don't ever get pressured into buying anything, right? If you don't feel comfortable making the sale, a great thing to do is get the person's contact information, get a card, and then go and do some more research and then call them later. Nine times out of 10, if the, if the card didn't sell that show, they're not gonna flip it the next day or so, you know, unless it's just something really hot. But in general, um, you do have some more time. If you take a number, take a card, and then maybe do some more research, ask around, go call a friend, you know, get some details before you make the final purchase because you want to be comfortable in whatever you're buying. And you know, and don't be afraid to walk away from a deal, especially if it looks too good. You know, that's what gets everybody in trouble. When 
you go to uh, a person's house, you go to a card show, uh, even online, and you think, man, this is this is really cheap. I I should hit the buy now. You know, I, I should grab this right away. And then you don't do any sort of research. You don't look in online for anything. And then you find out later you fell for something, you know, um, obvious. And that's sort of my 79, um, you know, that's my 79 um, OPG Gretzky story is, you know, I didn't know anything about that card. I just thought I got a good deal. That it was from a dealer at a show who I just trusted and a very naive of me. And, you know, the one thing that happened after that show was, you know, I went back after, you know, consulting with some folks on PSA's forums and lo and behold, the dealer didn't show up for the third day of the show. It's a three day show. I bought the card on the day two, day three, he's gone. And it wasn't just a straight cash deal. I had traded him a bunch of cards including an 89 Tiffany Bowman Griffey rookie card was part of the deal. And, you know, cause this card looked, you know, like it was, it was meant He gave me a story where he got it from. I mean, it, you know, I felt hook, line and sinker pretty dumb. I was not unsophisticated at the time. I had been in the hobby for a while when this occurred and I fell for it because I just looked at that card as being like a centerpiece key card to my collection that I could never get another chance to get again. And I let those blinders lead me down to, to a bad path. If I would have just taken a photo of it, posted it online and say, hey guys, do you think this card's real? I'm thinking about buying it tomorrow at a card show. I would have been told, nope, that card is 100% fake. Don't deal with it. And end of story. But instead, I had to go back to the card show, um, talk to the promoter. The promoter actually contacted the dealer who actually had set up many years with that you know, promoter, tracked him down, told him that he would file a police report if he didn't refund me my money because he agreed with me the card was fake. The dealer called me up and gave me back some of my cards that he I had traded for him and some of the cash. But I was never made full uh, whole from that deal because he had sold some cards and he gave me a big sob story end of story I was happy to get something back um, you know I got about 80% of what I traded him back but it was a big deal it took me months and months to get just to get that back and it just shows you like you can get blinded and make bad you know, bad uh, mistakes and, and just get blinded by the fact that you're going to get something amazing for a deal and you find out later it's going to be something just terrible and this is what happened to me so Again, you know, this leads me into what to do if you're scammed. Um, and you, and you, you know, the first thing is you got to confirm you're getting scammed, right? A lot of times people get scared. Um, you know, they get a card and then they, they doesn't look right. Um, and then you post the card online, which is what I would do. You know, hey, go to some websites and post the card and say, what do you think? Um, you know, and you'll generally get good opinions and you'll get bad opinions. And that's the hard part about being online. You would generally like to talk to experts, people who actually know about the card, but you can kind of, if you're smart enough in the hobby, you kind of weed out the people who are just saying stuff and the people who have good examples and, and actual evidence to support whatever they're saying. Uh, an example of this was, for me, I, I was at one point a Matt Holiday collector, which you can you know, judge me for that alone, but you know, um, you know, and I was buying a lot of Matt Holiday rare rookie cards and one come up that I had never seen before, and it was a 1999 Topps MVP promotion, Matt Holiday Parallel. Now, if you know about that MVP promotion, which when I went and read about it, it said that no rookie cards were part of that MVP promotion. So rookie cards shouldn't have the MVP stamp, but this one did. And so I just posted the card online and said, hey, I bought this MVP Matt Holiday rookie card, it's my understanding that there shouldn't be MVP promotion rookie cards, but it, did this one get backdoored or was this pack pulled? I'm just curious. The guy I bought it from was on blow and responded and said, Hey, I got this card legitimately. I'm not scamming you. Here's the evidence I have on it. And about 10 other guys responded. And so I was able to get the answer, 
but I, I inadvertently called the guy out, you know, in that thread because, you know, that, it was very easy to track down, you know, that card because it literally was the only one that's ever been sold um, that I, I found. Um, and that is an example, though, of sometimes you have to do that to kind of get peace of mind. Proof is hard to get. And this is another thing, too, is, you know, you can video your openings. Uh, you know, when you open the package, you can get photo evidence to show the card is different or been altered. And I'm just going to tell you, you know, PWCC, PSA, you know, they have stated openly that those things are not real evidence. And I think that's bullshit. Everyone else in the hobby think it is evidence, but it may not be enough to get your money back in some situations. So uh, it's it's hard, and I think that's why the hobby kind of sucks right now. Um, you can get scammed and never get your money back, even if you have some things like video evidence or, or proof, such as photo um, evidence, you know, photo um, verification that the card's been altered. You know, and again, if bought at a card show contact the promoter like I did you know if the dealer doesn't respond to you he doesn't show up to the next day or it's the last day of the show the promoter has all the contact information they should be able to get you in touch with that person and if it's something very serious you know the dealer you can tell the promoter you're going to call the police he definitely doesn't want to have to deal with the police and he might be able to convince that dealer to make it right such as in my case you know, if buying online, especially with new platforms coming into existence all over the place, you know, make sure you know what the return policy is before you even buy. You know, uh, every site has its own policy. You know, eBay has been very tough in certain situations to prove that you got scammed. A good scam that, or a bad scam that was running around for a while was you would uh, sell a card. So this is a seller. You get scammed. Um, and then the person would buy the card and return it, but return it with something else. And as long as you got something in the mail, a lot of times eBay would side with the buyer that he returned something to you, right? And sometimes they were even saying photo evidence of you opening the package wasn't enough proof to, to give you a refund. And I think that is, again, pits everyone in a bad spot and makes the hobby very difficult. And then remember this is that you yourself may have passed along a bad card to someone so you need to make sure especially for cards that either a are you know big cards you know cards that could have been faked could have been altered or cards that have a known history of being altered so for example you know um you know if i buy something like a 99 chirography griffey auto and i think it's real but I sell it one day, I should know that that card might be deemed fake because that card seems to be highly faked. And even though I thought about a real one, I could have sold someone a fake. And now I'm the one that could be accused of faking a card. And that sucks for people who aren't scammers to get accused of it. But you gotta remember, if you bought a card from someone and then it's deemed fake, you're gonna go after who sold it to you no matter what. And you just have to make sure that you're keeping good records of who you got your cards from and on something that's highly altered and faked, make sure that you yourself are doing the, the due diligence because it's gonna come back on you at some point. So I hope you guys took some lessons um, from this. I, I'm sure you know some folks are saying this is all common sense and a lot of it is, but the thing is is that we lose common sense when we think we're getting good deals or when money gets involved to certain levels and we don't do the right thing, I'm saying just keep a, uh, I would say almost like have a, um, have a, uh, a method to review and, and, and get some facts on a card before you buy, it, especially bigger ticket items. You know, think about what you need to do to verify it before you buy it. Say, I'm going to look it up on, you know, eBay. I'm going to look at past auction sold. I'm going to look at the dealer who's selling it. I'm going to see, you know, go to VCP or other tools to see if that serial number has been sold before the last few times. And I, can I trace it back to see what it looked like before? I know that seems silly now to do this for cards, but we're in a new era of scamming and I think we're going to get worse before it gets better. So I hope you guys enjoyed the advice. Uh, let me know what you think. 
If you got your own advice, your own tips I missed, I'd love to hear about them. I'll see you next time. Bye.